want to start by asking because we are here on a very special day, and I'd love to know um, for you both what does what does International Women's Day mean to you? <laughs> I think it's the most. Oh, does it work? Oh, I hope so. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, it's an absolute honour to have this film presented to you on International Women's Day. It could not be a more fitting or better celebration of women and our film. So I'm just so grateful to the BFI for putting this on today. Yeah, no, amazing. Really fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> now, the, the story we're about to see up on the screen with this in wonderful, wonderful cast um, is incredible. I wanted to know when you both first learned about this moment in history that so many people don't actually really know about and, and what your reactions were when you first learned about what, what these women did. Well, um, gosh, do you know, this film, the journey of this film to this moment is actually 10 years. Uh, and films so often take an incredibly long time. I don't know why, but they gestate and they take their time. Um, but this one was precipitated by... Um, the brilliant reunion program on Radio 4 and I remember hearing it uh, on my own and I heard these people being brought back together again some what, whatever how many many years later from 1970 and I remember thinking wow this is extraordinary and really rather moving um, and it was a moment where I thought that this is this is there's definitely something in this and I rushed off and tracked down the real women and said can we turn this story into a film would what do you feel about this and they were they were great um and then philippa and i got together sometime later and um yeah and here we are i just have to say suzanne's being very modest because when this program was on radio four the reunion this wonderful program everybody saw how this program and loads of producers were after this story and the tenacious Suzanne Mackey <laughs> beat everybody out of the way and got in there first. So down to Suzanne that we, we were able to tell this wonderful story ourselves. Well, thank, thank goodness you. she was there. And what, what implored you, 10 years you say, what, what implored you to kind of stick with it and fight to get this film brought into fruition? Well, I, I was, I'm an ingenue in this. In Team Misbehaviour, <laughs> I only arrived in Team Misbehaviour three years ago. I think feature films take a long time and you have to have a real belief in the subject matter. And this, this was one which Suzanne and, and the re writer Rebecca Frayne felt so passionately about and they stuck to it and good on them because when I, when I arrived, um, we had the interest of Pathé who, who saw something in this film and whether it was the zeitgeist around, they wanted to make, they wanted to make this film and that's when I came on board. You just have to really have such... I don't know, balls of steel, don't you, to make a feature film? Yeah, I think, and, and you know, I think it's just a great story. It's a great moment in time. It's a great story. It, it brings a fantastic sort of gallery of characters to, together from, from all walks of life, and it's an encapsulating story of a moment in time, of a particular moment in social, political history. Um, and so, yeah, and then, of course, you know, you have to find the right director. Uh, and we wanted it to be a female-led um, film. We wanted it to be written and directed and produced by women. Uh, and that's, that's, that's not always easy because the, the pool is small and those that are good and those that are um, able to finance your film are busy often. And so getting Philippa, and, and Philippa had just made, I think, the most extraordinary thing, three women, three girls, sorry, uh, three women, that's another, yeah, three girls, which I thought was breathtaking. Um, and, you know, joining together with Philippa was, was extraordinary, and yeah. And then tell me a little bit, because, you know, it's a period film, and um, what struck me about it was the physicality of the women in the pageants, because it really was very physically demanding. I was wondering what sort of research you, you both had to do and what sort of research the girls had to do in order to, to make this seem truly believable. Well, I think some of the people who were in the pageant are in the audience tonight, aren't they? Put your hands up. We've got some pageant contestants. Are. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, 
Well, I gave this, the crowd second uh, the most horrendous job when I took on this film because I said every single person who is a, um, a contestant has to come from their own country and speak their own language, which I think we managed almost 100%, not quite, but we, I really wanted them, the, the girls who, you, who you'll see in the film, who are the contestants, to be from their own country and be able to speak their own language. You're laughing because I kept getting you to do improvisations, didn't I? Um, <laughs> and also, the poor girls who, who volunteered to be these roles then had to go to deportment camp. And we, we had a fantastic teacher from Lucy Clayton's School of Modelling who put them through their paces and made them wear high heels and, and do all the deportment to make their walking correct, to make their, them feel like they were part of 1970s womanhood, which was quite a shock, wasn't it? It was a, quite a shock to have to do that. But um, they did it very well, and they became a brilliant part of our team. And Gugu as well, who, who plays Jennifer Hoston, had to s submit herself to this terrible regime of deportment le lessons. And then how involved were the, the women from the documentary, the women involved? I know that Gugu went and met Jennifer um, and spent a little bit of time with her as well. Um, how, how involved were they with the project? We could not have made this film without the real women involved. Mm. They gave us so much material. We sat at their kitchen tables for many, many hours, absorbing all their stories and then um, m um, creating the script. And this happened over quite a few years. We, we returned to the women many, many times. And through them, we were able to tell their fantastic story, not only the Women's Liberation women themselves, but also the contestants who you'll see in the film, Jennifer Hoston and, and Pearl Janssen. And um, we've got to talk about this cast, because it's just wonderful. I mean, just looking up here now, and it really it, it gravitates towards the two central performances, Kira Knightley and Gugu as well. But also we've got Jesse Buckley in there. We've got, you know, even Greg Kinnear coming in as Bob Hope. Just a fantastic cast. Like, how, how did you get him? <laughs> well, I think, a, I think a, great, a, a great story that had found its moment, I think it was speaking to a lot of women. Um, I think Philippa, I do really believe Philippa, I think people want to work with someone as sensitive and as talented. Um, and I think, yeah, we had a great casting director, Nina Gold. But I think, you know, the these sometimes it's just a story finding its moment that resonates for people and it has a particular truth and a particular impact emotionally. And they're quite these things are quite subtle. But I think a script or an idea being put to you at a particular moment in time with a particular group of people like Philippa that you just think, yeah, I want to be part of that. And it's never about money or, y you know, actually in the end it's, it's just a connection you make to a story and a connection you make to a filmmaker that probably will result in people saying, yes, I'll do that. And that's what happened. It did. And then um, this has been... Well, this was an event that happened 50 years ago, and to watch it back now, I'm, I'm sure people will agree when they watch it, quite shocking in the treatment of the women in the name of entertainment, certainly. How do you think this story will resonate today, 50 years after the event? I think that's a question we should ask after the film, in a way. <laughs> I think, I, I, I hope it resonates with people. It certainly resonated with, with me when, when Suzanne um, asked me to come on board and I was had the privilege of reading the script. I mean, it was just, I thought, this story has to be told. The Miss World 1970 pro um, contest was like a lightning conductor for all kinds of political protests, which we've tried to reflect in our film. So maybe we'll see after. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Um, and a little bit more about the set, because you had such fantastic, robust talented women on, on set at the time. Was there a sense of camaraderie? Because you've obviously got these, I mean, we'll see in the film itself, but we've got these three separate stories that kind of weave into each other at the same time. What was that like to be a part of on set? It was the most joyful production, I have to say. Everybody who worked on it seemed to get sort of swept away by the material, to be honest. It's, it felt like such an important story to tell and such a joyful one to tell and with wit and, and warmth. And we had the most amazing time. It was very collaborative. You know, Kira, Gugu and Jessie, all very fine, fine actresses who are artists in their own right and, and brought so much to their, to their roles that one could only dream of. So s sort of sitting there in the front row watching them was a, an absolute joy. Yeah, 
No, absolutely. And, um, you know, and actually, of course, because it's so different um, story worlds we were creating. Um, and again, I hope when you see the film that we want, we, we came to it in a very, uh, we wanted to tell the various story strands in, in a very even handed way. Um, so often we were working in sort of almost isolation from each other so that, that we'd be with the Miss World contestants for some part of it and then the women, women's lib lot for the other part and then Julia Morley and her world. So, you know, some, but, but you get a great sense of the whole, everyone coming together f for the actual event, uh, the Albert Hall. So, um, yeah. Wonderful. And just, just finally, before we um, leave these good people to watch the film themselves, um, what are you hoping that people are going to take away from this film this evening? I think that, again, that's a question that I don't want to preempt. <laughs> <laughs> but your hopes, I, I, what are you hoping? What I people hope is that right. people really enjoy watching it. I think that's the purpose of making films, is that they, people in the audience will absolutely be taken on a ride and have a fantastic time watching. That would be my, my ideal. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. So, if we could have a massive, massive round of applause, as good here.